Welcome to In a Heartbeat. I'm Liz Aiken. You know, the show comes to you from the studios of the Grosse Point War Memorial. You are watching WMTV. I'm really pleased because you know what? Remember earlier in the year, I had a guest, Dr. Nina Negresha. We talked about kidney function. These two small organs are so important in the body, they, I call them filter supremo. And we started that show talking about the basic information about the kidney that everybody should know. And I told you this was the first part of a series of talks about the kidney. You cannot learn enough, you cannot be informed enough. It's all for your own good health, good choices, good living. So I'm really pleased, this is part two. My guest today is Dr. Karula. He is a nephrologist and we literally have so much to talk about. And I wanna point out, at the beginning we'll do so a brief recap about the kidneys. We're gonna talk about various modes of kidneys when you are before you're having a transplant, but well, we'll get to that. And this, the last part of the show is very interesting because we're going to talk about website information. So that's Aristotle, beginning, middle, end, and here is Dr. Karula. Dr. Krish Karula. Hello, Liz. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be for here. Coming. Oh, this is so great. Okay, so I want to know right off the bat a little of your background. Sure. Mm hmm. You want to start when I was born or yeah, you want to... <laughs> take it right from the top. <laughs> let's fast forward just a few years. <laughs> okay, let's fast forward that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, born in India um, and uh, raised up in Bombay. I did all my medical training in Bombay in the 80s, actually. Um, I would say 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, then moved to a place called Dubai in the Middle East. Dubai, right, we, we've all heard of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm yes, sure it's have. on the world map nowadays. So that's why you may have heard of it, yeah. And uh, spent about 10 years there before moving to the United States, yeah. So you went from, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but you went from D Dubai to Des Moines almost, but actually Iowa City. <laughs> that's right. So very close, this is quite a change. <laughs> Quite a change. Okay, Quite so a change, yes. first of all, why medicine? And then secondly, why nephrology? Well, um, that's a great question. Uh, I'm sure you, every doctor who comes here, you ask them why medicine. And uh, if you ask anybody from India, they'll probably tell you that so many years ago, there were only two choices over there. <laughs> Either do engineering or do medicine. I just, I've heard <laughs> Take <that>. your pick. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that answer. <laughs> So, um, and I chose medicine, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and haven't regretted it. Very good. And then, I know somewhere in here is a parrot story, oh. Dr. Karula. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want the goods, because this is great. But you want to know why I did nephrology, <laughs> Yeah, really. I want to know why nephrology. Um, so, well, when I, we moved to the Middle East, uh, there was a place where you can buy an African gray parrot. And you know, there's something which is cool to have, so mm -hmm. that's what we bought. Yeah. An African gray parrot. Yes. All right, so like how big is this thing? Oh, it's about this, um, this big. Okay, a, average size average of a parrot. Average size bird, okay. and it's cool because it can imitate anything. And it imitated your voice, it Im imitate your voice, my voice, the doorbell, and <laughs> people have heard of that, and they, they are available here too. But. So it was fun to have that bird, and we grew quite attached to it. And uh, sometime about a few years before I moved to the States, uh, it fell sick. And uh, believe it or not, the symptoms were that it, the only thing it made was urine. You know, it didn't make any stools here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that got me all flustered. I took him to the vet and they couldn't <laughs> diagnose anything. And they said, try antibiotics, this and that. In the end, they said, you know what? We think he has kidney disease here. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, at that time, uh, not knowing, I just believed them, just gave him a lot of water to meet up all these requirements about mm -hmm. fluids. And um, I'm s sad to say that eventually, uh, after coming here, mm -hmm. uh, he or she died. It's probably a he. <laughs> <laughs> but how interesting, so, though, of all bizarre so diagnoses. Yes. So, that's the reason I chose to do nephrology. Mm -hmm. 
That's interesting. No, I don't I like get, that. No, don't, don't get so serious. That, that's not the reason. I'm so serious about your bird. No, okay. <laughs> that, that's not the reason. <laughs> but it, no, actually, but nephrology is, uh, mm -hmm. is a very fascinating science, yeah. And uh, if you want to really think of it, it's, uh, it's the way we, it's an environment a body lives in. It's not the external environment, but an environment which actually bathes you. Mm -hmm. But the physiology beyond it and the science of the molecular aspects of it really intrigues me. And then that leads to whether it's physiology or the pathology, what goes wrong with it and what to do, mm -hmm. how to fix it, is uh, something very interesting here. Yeah. In Israel, and as you say that, it, it almost falls under the heading of the nature versus nurture. What is that, that is a congenital or some kind of a, a defect that is in the system of the DNA or the genomes or whatever, or what mm -hmm. is in the person's um, control of compliance versus non-compliance that they do? So I, I can see that. All right, so what we're going to do, though, we're going to do just a brief recap mm -hmm. of the kidneys and including stages of kidneys. To set us up. Um, sure. Um, Liz, it's hard to know, for people to know if they have kidney problems. Uh, literally because in the early stages of kidney disease, as we call it, um, for most diseases, um, people don't have any symptoms. And they don't uh, have any pain or headache or fever or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, the earliest thing which you can think of somewhere in the middle of their disease or something like that is leg swelling, maybe sometimes shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. That sometimes draws their attention uh, to go to see a doctor. And the doctor would probably draw blood tests. One of them would be a test called creatinine. Mm -hmm. Right. And the creatinine helps the doctor calculate what is called the GFR. And then that's how the patient is classified from stage one to stage five kidney disease. Stage mm -hmm. one being the earliest, mm -hmm. and stage five is when all the kidney has nearly no function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you're looking to what's next from that. Exactly. And we were saying before too that basically at stage one, like you say, they're not even going to know it. But there may be some things that could tip them off that if they have accompanying heart disease, or they have diabetes, that just by that, the mere, you know, uh, triangle of the three points, one is going to be the heart disease, one is diabetes, and what do they both end up at, which is Absolutely. Kidney. What okay. you're referring to is comorbidities of mm -hmm. what has led them to have the kidney disease in most cases. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very interesting that you bring this up because a lot of patients who come to see me, uh, they probably, they doubt is that they have any disease at all. Right. So they, don't want, they, want to, they don't want to hear it. They know they went, came to a kidney doctor. There's probably something wrong, but they don't know what because for them, uh, doctor, I'm making urine. I don't know why my right. doctor says that I have kidney disease. Right. So they always liken the production of urine or making urine as my kidney should be fine. Right, exactly. But that's not the case as we know. As the mm -hmm. kidneys get damaged, and that's how you know by the blood test, mm -hmm. Right. There, they may not have symptoms. Right. It's like a bad washing machine, if I want to call it. We can probably <laughs> wear the clothes which are half dirty, as I say, mm -hmm. and uh, not know about it, and you don't feel anything different. Yeah. Right. So that's why it's hard for them to comprehend that they have kidney disease, and they need a lot of explanation about what this all means. Okay, and and truly, too, a lot of the. Um, Explanation too. We're going to get to the last when we're talking right. about the website because it, it's brilliant to say the least. It's Thank brilliant. You, yeah. So let's just say somebody who's moved into now stage five, and the availability, as you say, of a kidney, it's not yet, or they're not quite at that, but they need something because they cannot function. Their own two kidneys are not functioning sure. well enough. So the options are pre-transplant, or what? Um, 